Number 10. World War II Fighter Plane Researchers have discovered a sunken fighter plane from World War II in a rather unusual place. It was discovered just off the very popular tourist destination, Miami Beach. The researchers have been checking out an artificial reef off the coast of Miami-Dade County when they uncovered the intact wreckage of the fighter plane upside down at 240 feet, 73 meters deep. The plane they found is a Grumman F6F Hellcat, completely crusted over with marine growth. It also happens to be the new home of a group of lionfish. According to the Naval History and Heritage Command, the Hellcat was put into service in 1943 as a fighter plane that could counter the deadly Japanese Zero. Nobody knows exactly where this specific one came from, but we do know that at least 79 of these airplanes were lost off the coast of Florida between 1943 and 1952. This was likely one of those that vanished. Not from fighting, but because training exercise fails. This plane probably never even saw any combat at all. Number 9. Royal Air Force Vehicle Graveyard There is an abandoned Royal Air Force station where trucks, boats, and all kinds of amazing military vehicles have gone to die. These vehicles include military pieces of hardware all the way from the D-Day attack on Germany to the end of the Cold War. In fact, a lot of vehicles abandoned in this graveyard once helped Britain achieve victory when they stormed the beaches of Normandy over half a century ago. The base itself, which has been untouched and forgotten since 1963, is in Lincolnshire. Huge pieces of deadly machinery from the 1940s are rusting away at the end of a runway, some of them swallowed by trees and bushes. One of the most amazing vehicles you can find here is a DUKW amphibious vehicle produced between 1942 and 1945. The British Army continued to use them until the 1970s. There are also military Caterpillar tractors that were originally dumped on the site 50 years ago. They were a critical part of the war effort, but had no use to Britain once the fighting was over. They were stored with the intention of using them later, at least for parts, but they were never actually used for anything. Number 8. HMS Audacious Off the coast of Mollenhead, Ireland, there lies a giant's graveyard. In the days of World War II, a navigation route was used by wartime convoys which passed along Mallinhead. In modern times, it's not used for much, but many of the ships from the war are still there, sitting at the bottom of the ocean. One of these vessels is the HMS Audacious, the very first Great British battleship to be destroyed, not in the Second World War, but in the first. The HMS Audacious was a continuation of the original dreadnought that popped up in 1906. At the time, every other battleship on Earth was inferior and obsolete. It had five main gun turrets and 25 millimeters of armor. But despite being so heavily protected, the ship was destroyed in October of 1914 from an explosion at the hands of a measly mine. The mine had been laid by the German ship SS Berlin. When the HMS Audacious ran into the mine, it blew up with such force that the ship sank within minutes. 23,000 tons of metal and guns floated gently to the bottom of the ocean, where the wreckage remains to this very day. Number 7. German U-Boat Wreckage A German submarine, also known as a U-Boat, from the First World War was discovered wrecked on the bottom of the ocean by a crew doing a survey for laying power cables. Coincidentally, this happens to be the very U-boat allegedly destroyed by a sea monster off the coast of Scotland. The wreckage of the U-boat is over 100 years old, yet almost completely intact. According to its captain, Gunther Kretsch, the submarine was cruising across the surface of the water so that it could recharge its batteries when a beast rose from the sea, something horrifying with horns and teeth that glistened in the moonlight. The beast was so huge that it managed to damage the forward deck plating, preventing the submarine from submerging. The British military then showed up, a patrol boat called the HMS Coriopus. They captured all the German soldiers and took them prisoner. The official report at the time was that the British destroyed the submarine, not a great big monster. But now we have the actual vessel to investigate for evidence. Unfortunately, it's only been seen through sonar scans because it's at the bottom of the ocean until a dive team is organized to go down and properly investigate the U-boat to see how it sank, we won't know if it really was a monster or just some lying Germans. What do you think about this wild story? 
Was the submarine really attacked by a monster, or were the Germans making it all up? Let us know your thoughts and theories in the comments below. And if you are liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Japanese Ghost Ships 2021 saw a surge of volcanic activity in a chain of islands south of Tokyo. There are about 110 volcanoes in the region, mainly beneath the area around Iwo Jima. With the seismic activity causing the seabed around Mount Suribachi to raise itself up, dozens of Japanese transport vessels that had been lost during the war also rose to the surface. These last military ships were literally pushed out of their watery graves onto the shore by the amazing force of nature. So far as anyone knows, this is the first time in history that volcanic activity actually resurrected ghost ships. The ships weren't that important during the war. They were transport vessels captured by the United States Navy in 1945 in the spring. The Navy then used them to create a breakwater by scuttling all 24 vessels off the coast of Iwo Jima. When the war was over, the artificial breakwater was abandoned and the ships eventually sank out of sight to the bottom of the sea. And they stayed there, lost to history, until the volcanoes reshaped the terrain and brought them up for air. Number 5. Cold War Spy Plane In 1947, a U.S. Army plane crashed on a remote sheet of ice in Greenland. It was a B-29 superfortress named Key Bird on its way to the North Pole for an extremely secret mission at the beginning of what would become the Cold War. It was recently spotted by NASA, who used a digital camera attached to their P-3 Orion airplane to take a snapshot of the wrecked plane sticking out of the snow all these years later. According to Live Science, the plane went down because of bad weather and because it ran out of fuel. It had no choice but to make an emergency landing on a frozen lake. The 11 men inside the aircraft survived the rough landing, but had to spend three days hungry in the middle of nowhere before they were finally rescued. Forty years after the plane crashed, the test pilot, Daryl Greenemeyer, tried to restore the lost plane. However, the plane caught fire and he was forced to abandon the project. Nobody appears to have any plans of getting the plane out of the ice. It really is in a barren patch of land where such a project would cost a ridiculous amount of money. For now, the snow is at least keeping the keybird preserved and in good shape. Number 4. King Tiger Tank a King Tiger tank was found back in 2001 underneath a road in France. These terrifying machines were used by the Germans in World War II for decimating the other European forces. As of right now, the tank is split into two parts. The turret has already been rescued and is undergoing restoration, but the rest of the tank is still stuck in the ground near Paris. According to historical records, the tank was from the 101 SS S. Abitilung and it was lost when it fell into a crater in August of 1944. After that, the tank was blown to pieces by a scrap dealer who took all the big chunks to salvage. The rest of the tank, the pieces that were too big to take away, were just left in the dirt and a new road was built after the war, directly over top of the tank's hull. Technically, the tank is now property of the city of fontenay saint Perry. One of the reasons the city has been so apprehensive to dig up the tank is that they believe some of its shells could be live and they could explode. An agreement must be worked out between the French Army Service and the city to excavate the Tiger tank without accidentally blowing someone up. Seems like this is something that should be taken care of sooner rather than later. Number 3. The Barbette of the USS Arizona On December 7, 1941, the USS Arizona sank. For those with a good memory, you'll know that this was the day that the Japanese attacked the naval base at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii. Over 1,170 crewmen on the USS Arizona were killed, resulting in one of the most devastating surprise naval attacks in human history. The USS Arizona was built in Brooklyn back in 1914. It entered the service in 1916 and was one of only two Pennsylvania-class battleships. At the time, it was one of the most heavily armed ships in the Navy. It had a dozen 14-inch guns, it was 608 feet long, and it had a displacement of 31,400 tons. During World War I, the USS Arizona didn't actually do any fighting. It kept watch along the eastern coastline. In 1918, it escorted the ship carrying President Woodrow Wilson to the Paris Peace Conference. Fast forward to 1941, the Arizona was one of four major battleships that sank during the Japanese surprise attack. 
The USS Arizona sank about 40 feet, 12 meters deep, but not all of it was submerged. The ship actually kept burning in some parts for over two days. In 1958, the wreckage of the USS Arizona was deemed so important that it should have a memorial. Elvis Presley did a benefit concert at Pearl Harbor, which helped raise a massive amount of money for the memorial. It was opened in 1962 as a giant concrete and steel structure spanning the wreckage of the ship. Even though the USS Arizona is lost under the sea, the memorial is floating right above it. Have you ever seen it? Let us know in the comments below. Number 2. USS Wasp The USS Wasp, or at least what's left of it, has been discovered nearly 3 miles, 4.8 kilometers deep in the Pacific, resting at the bottom of the ocean. It was found in an area known as the Abyssal Plain, arguably the spookiest part of the ocean. It's a place with no light, very few sea creatures, and a huge amount of pressure. The pressure is so immense that if you were to go down there, you would be crushed and your brains might squirt out of your eyes. The USS Wasp was carrying 71 planes and over 2,000 men in September of 1942. The aircraft carrier was escorting a convoy of U.S. Marines to Guadalcanal in the Solomon Islands. But before they could make it, the USS Wasp was ambushed by Japanese forces. Torpedoes struck the aircraft carrier, with one of them hitting the magazine. This set off a devastating series of explosions, which caught the boat on fire. As it took on water and slowly sank, it also burned. Oil and gas spilled into the ocean. Captain Sherman had to give the order to abandon ship, and everyone who wasn't dead got away in the life rafts. When the dust settled, 193 men had been killed. On the other hand, 1,469 survivors were rescued, according to War History Online. As for its rediscovery over 70 years later, it was thanks to Paul Allen, the co-founder of Microsoft. His fascination with wrecked ships from World War II and all his money allowed him to hire a team and procure the latest technology, including underwater drones and robots. With all this tech, it was easy for him to track down and document the underwater wreckage of the USS Wasp. Number 1. Wrecked Steam Trawler All that remains of the steam trawler called the Sheraton is a broken hole on the beach. If you were to walk past it, you probably wouldn't even realize you were looking at the remains of a warship. The craft was built in 1907, used as a fishing vessel, and then turned into a warship when things turned hostile in the North Sea. It was in these days that the Europeans were getting a little nervous about a united Germany growing stronger. And for good reason, because the war was declared in 1914. The British Royal Navy took the steam trawler and turned it into an anti-submarine patrol boat. Then, in World War II, it was taken again by the Navy and armed with a gun. After the war, the Sheraton was painted yellow and then used as a target. It was anchored off the coast, but high winds in 1947 caused it to stray away from its moorings and settle on the beach. Nobody ever bothered to take it away, and so it's just been sitting there, decaying ever since. It's still there today, but probably not for much longer. Number 10. Lost Island of Gold The remains of a fabled and lost island of gold have been discovered at the bottom of the Musi River in Indonesia. According to local legends, the island of gold was once home to man-eating snakes, fiery volcanoes, and talking parrots. Divers who went to the bottom of the muddy river to explore hauled up hundreds of ancient relics, from temple bells to coins, tools to statues. They even found treasures such as golden sword hilts, rings of golden ruby, and flutes shaped like peacocks. The amount of treasure discovered at the bottom of the river is honestly boggling, and it all points to one thing. Scientists have without a doubt discovered the lost city of Srivijaya. Srivijaya, or the island of gold, was a port city and an important stop along the trade route between east and west. It controlled all trade flowing up or down the river from the middle of the 600s all the way to 1025. It was the Chola dynasty of India that finally ruined the city's power by becoming a bigger trading center. The last prince of Sri Vijaya, Parameswara, tried to regain control in the 1390s but was defeated by the kingdom of Java. After that, the island of gold devolved into a hideout for Chinese pirates. In modern times, the island is completely gone underwater. 
all the treasure and relics have fallen into the river, lost until archaeologists finally went down and started digging stuff up in 2011. Number 9. Ancient Shipwreck While cleaning an anchor chain on the coast of Antigua, commercial diver Maurice Belgrave made the most astonishing discovery of his life. He was underwater, scrubbing the anchor chain, when he came across a naval vessel hidden in the mud. As it turned out, it had been down there, submerged near the Antigua Naval Dockyard for 250 years. The wooden ship is about 130 feet long, which is actually quite large compared to most of the wrecks found around the Caribbean island. Historians believe it could be the 1762 French merchant ship called the Beaumont. After the French East India Company collapsed, it became a warship in the French Navy until 1772. The ship was then used in the American Revolutionary War under the name of the Lyon. It was captured in 1778 while supporting the 13 colonies as the Americans fought for independence. But after it was captured and taken back to the Antigua harbor, it was too damaged to be of use to anyone. At some point, it sank right there in the harbor and was long forgotten. Number 8. The Mystery Monster In 2017, researchers with an unidentified oil and gas company discovered a giant skeleton at the bottom of the ocean, nearly 3,000 feet deep. The researchers were using a remotely operated vehicle to survey the area when they stumbled upon the set of bones and they were unlike anything they had ever seen before. There was what appeared to be a giant spinal column sitting in the muck. Naturally curious, the individual controlling the remotely operated vehicle tried to pick up a piece of the skeleton with the vehicle's mechanical claw. But the second that the claw touched the bone, it literally disintegrated into dust. It was impossible to take a sample back to the surface to see what kind of creature the skeleton belonged to. But here's where things get freaky. The skeleton, at least the part that the researchers were able to see with their underwater camera, appeared to be 98 feet long. That's longer than any other marine animal. Nobody has a clue what monster the bones could have possibly belonged to. Judging by the length of the skeleton, it could have been some sort of underwater serpent or even an ocean dragon. And even though that's obviously speculation, the truth is probably even stranger. There is simply no animal underwater that we know of that can match up to this skeleton, making it more obvious than ever just how little we know about what lies beneath the waves. Number 7. Sunken Tank A US Sherman tank from World War II was recently hauled out of the water during a Russian military exercise. The tank had been submerged ever since it was lost back in 1945. The history of the tank goes back to when a convoy of 26 American ships left Scotland and headed towards the Barents Sea. These ships were supposed to be delivering aid to the Soviet allies. The ships made it to Scandinavia and were on their way to a nearby port when a German U-boat snuck up on them and began blasting. The German U-boat destroyed the American ship, which had been loaded with 7,679 tons of cargo. Some of this cargo included huge military tanks. Well, there was nothing much they could do to get them out of the water at the time. The tanks were abandoned. It would be over 70 years later that the Russians finally brought up one of the Sherman tanks from the wreckage of the ship, the Thomas Donaldson. After exploring the wreckage above water, they also discovered a 102 mm gun, which is an anti-aircraft machine gun, and smaller items like artillery shell casings, and even a few locomotive wheels. Incredible how many details were able to be recovered, especially after so long submerged. Number 6. An Alien Anomaly Off the coast of Antarctica, about 100 miles from land, a strange anomaly has been discovered underwater. The anomaly was found thanks to internet sleuths poring over pictures from Google Earth. In satellite images, they managed to spot a strange structure just beneath the surface, something very obviously man-made. The discovery is a series of straight lines, all connected perpendicular to each other. And as you may already know, Mother Nature doesn't really build in straight lines. Sadly, it's hard to say exactly what this anomaly under the water is. It appears to be some kind of huge base. Then again, it could be a lost temple or city left behind by an ancient civilization that once lived on Antarctica. The truth is that we could speculate all day over what the mysterious object under the water is, but there's no way to know for sure unless somebody dives down there and takes pictures. All we have now is a satellite image of a peculiar structure off the Antarctic coasts and a whole lot of UFO conspiracy theorists claiming it's a secret base left behind by alien visitors. Number 5. The Ghosts of Chuk Lagoon 
Chuuk Lagoon was home to a Japanese naval base during World War II. Because the lagoon provided a natural harbor for the ships and offered natural shelter from attack, it was the perfect place for the Japanese to keep their base. They built airfields on the islands inside the atoll and really tried to secure the area. But in February of 1944, America launched Operation Hailstorm. Over the course of just two days, the US Navy attacked and destroyed the Japanese forces at Chuuk Lagoon. The Japanese lost at least 50 ships and well over 250 planes. Where did all those war machines go? They are all still sitting at the bottom of the lagoon, where they've stayed for over 70 years. Most of the planes and ships are covered in corals and sponges, filled with fish and divers instead of soldiers. What was once a disaster for the Japanese Imperial Army is now one of the most popular places in the world for divers to swim with wrecked war vehicles. Would you be brave enough to dive at Chuuk Lagoon to see the hundreds of scattered military vehicles on the bottom of the sea? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to hit subscribe before the end of the video. Number 4. Mayan Salt Workers A team of archaeologists working with Louisiana State University recently excavated some ancient Maya dwellings. These dwellings are directly associated with salt production in a makeshift mine that is now underwater. For a bit of background, the earliest known use of salt in the Maya Kingdom was 2,500 years ago. On the Yucatan Peninsula, the Maya boiled brine in salt kitchens to create salt that they could trade at markets and use with their food. They were doing this almost 3,000 years ago, which is honestly quite impressive because producing salt takes quite a bit of scientific knowledge, though clearly the Maya had that in abundance. The archaeologists had been studying a group of submerged salt kitchens in Belize where the Maya produced their salt. They have discovered clay pots and thatched dwellings preserved in the sediment. In total, they've identified at least 10 salt kitchens that were part of a major complex which the Maya produced salt on an industrial scale. This was a permanent community dedicated to the production of salt, likely for regional trade. Sadly, it's all underwater right now and so investigating the remains requires a lot of patience and a lot of Tupperware containers. The archaeologists have to bring out hundreds of wood samples from these sunken dwellings and kitchens, each one locked in a plastic box. Number 3. Sinkhole Treasures A discovery in a sinkhole has revealed some startling information. It turns out human beings have been hanging out in Florida for about 14,500 years. The reason this is exciting news is that it totally flips the theory of when humans settled in the Americas on its head. The sinkhole was excavated in the Osceola River just south of Tallahassee. Archaeologists brought out of the hole a stone knife, the bones of a mastodon, and fossilized poop. All of these peculiar artifacts point to the plain fact that humans were hunting mastodon in Florida nearly 15 centuries ago. It would suggest the colonization of the Americas was infinitely more complicated than anyone has previously thought. Not only were human beings this far south 1500 years earlier than previously claimed by scientists, but they seemed to have already been dug in. They were already hunting, building tools, and dumping their trash in a huge sinkhole. It was Jesse Halligan who actually dove into the sinkhole 126 times to bring the artifacts back to the surface. She's a scientist with Florida State University. According to Jesse, the hole was definitely made by humans who had likely used it as a kind of trash can for their unwanted animal remains, mostly bone. Oh yeah, and they used it for their poop. Number 2. Naked Shark In 2019, fishermen in the Mediterranean Sea, very close to Sardinia in Italy, made a shocking discovery. They pulled from the depths of the sea a mutant fish unlike anything anyone had ever seen before. In a world first, these fishermen had caught a completely naked shark. You might be thinking, Aren't sharks naked anyway? Technically, you're right. But in this case, the blackmouth cat shark was born without skin and without any teeth. In the world of sharks, it doesn't get much more naked than that. The real mystery here is that scientists have never seen a naked shark before. They've encountered plenty of cases of albinism in which a shark is completely white because of a genetic skin mutation. But to not have any skin at all is unheard of. And even weirder is the fact that the shark was living a perfectly normal life until the fishermen rudely pulled it out of the ocean. It was three years old at its time of death. It even had a belly full of food. For sharks, it apparently doesn't matter if they have teeth or skin or not. They are still top predators. Number 1. Lost City of Microbes 
Divers off the Greek island of Zakynthos came across what they thought was the remains of an ancient city submerged underwater. What they found were huge column bases that looked as though they once formed the foundation for temples and other structures. There was a whole lot of excitement in the archaeological community, but all that excitement came to an end when archaeologists went down and realized that the columns were actually made by microbes. It wasn't an underwater city from some lost civilization, but rather geological features made by microbes millions of years ago. The microbes created their little fake city by eating methane and changing the chemical composition of dirt. The reason the columns look the way they do is more of a phenomenon than anything. This particular spot on the ocean floor is very cold because methane is leaking into the water. In the sediments, there are microbes which actually consume the methane for energy. These microbes slowly change the dusty sediments on the bottom of the seafloor until they turned into hard rock called dolomite. It took a few million years for the process to complete and it has been finished for about 2.6 million years now. The columns have been around for quite some time. They just don't actually have anything to do with humans or an ancient civilization. Number 10. Psychedelic Russian Salt Mine Deep under a Russian city, the walls of an abandoned salt mine are completely covered in swirls, fractals, and intense designs that will make you feel like you ate the wrong kind of mushrooms. The salt mine is covered in psychedelic patterns all over the walls and ceiling, but the patterns are completely natural. They're caused by layers of mineral carnalite. All these layers of minerals swirl on the walls in different colors to create quite the trippy backdrop. The mineral carnalite is used in the process of plant fertilization and normally turns yellow or dirty red. But in this abandoned mine, it also has turned brilliant shades of blue, and sometimes it's colorless, creating the mind-bending patterns that make the walls of this underground space so unique. The salt mine itself can be found in Yekaterinburg, over 650 feet, 198 meters deep beneath the surface. There's a small part of the mine being actively used today, but miles of it are abandoned and only accessible if you have a special government permit. We were able to see these insane natural indoor rave designs thanks to an abandoned space adventurer and photographer who managed to get below ground and get some incredible pictures. Thanks to him, we have images of a creepy Russian salt mine that feels like the backdrop for a Pink Floyd music video. Number 9. Gartlock Hospital The Gartlock Hospital in Scotland is one of the most horrifying lunatic asylums ever abandoned. It opened its doors in 1889 near the small village of Gartlock, where it got its name. After serving patients for a hundred years as a hospital, the institution closed its doors in 1996. As of right now, the creepy abandoned mental hospital is in the process of being turned into a luxury village for rich people. It's hard to say which is worse, an abandoned hospital filled with ghosts or an abandoned hospital filled with swanky luxury apartments. Here's a bit of history on the place. Before the structure was a hospital, it was an estate. It was purchased by the city of Glasgow for less than $10,000. The first patients were admitted in 1896, and by 1899 there were over 465 people in the asylum being treated, and by 1902 a tuberculosis sanatorium was opened. During the war, the hospital was transformed into a special emergency medical station for soldiers. Psychiatric patients were all moved to other hospitals or locked up in special temporary wards. After 1948, when the world began to get a little bit more modern, that was when Gartlock really started to decline. There just wasn't much need for a mental hospital anymore, and nobody has been a patient there since 1996. Number 8. Fort Hancock Fort Hancock can be found in New Jersey. It's an abandoned military fortress at Sandy Hook, originally constructed back in 1859. It was part of a coastal artillery base to defend the new world against those of the old world. But it didn't see much action, and by 1974, parts of the fortress began to be decommissioned. Some portions of the base are still around today, with the oldest working piece being the lighthouse. Even though the fortress was active for over a century, it saw most of its action during World War II as a station for over 7,000 residents. It had cannons and anti-aircraft guns in case the Germans or Japanese got too close, though this was unlikely. People stationed at the fortress included the Women's Army Corps and African-American soldiers. The Army kind of wanted to tuck both of these groups aside, so they assigned them to stay at Fort Hancock a fort that hadn't been particularly useful since the 1800s. Number 7. The Wild West The abandoned Wild West theme park designed by former Disney mastermind Russell Pearson opened to the public in 1961. It included a roller coaster, old-timey photos, a saloon, and all the trappings of a perfect gold rush town on the new frontier. 
Back in the 60s, it cost somewhere around a million dollars to build the park, including over 40 replica structures to make the Wild West town truly authentic. But people don't really care much about the Wild West anymore. In the 1960s, the park was getting around 620,000 visitors a year. That's not too shabby for this kind of theme park in the middle of nowhere North Carolina. But by 2008, that number had dropped down to 340,000. It was forced to close its doors in 2009, but not only because of money problems. Also, they were having problems with the guests. One of them got stranded on a chairlift for hours and brought down a mountain of negative publicity on the failing park. The park has tried to open again over the years, but every attempt has failed. It's now a permanent ghost village. Number six, the Ohio State Reformatory. The Ohio State Reformatory was proposed in April of 1884. The first 150 inmates were brought in over a decade later in 1896 when much of the prison still hadn't been finished yet. But they needed the inmates for laborers to help install the sewer system and the brick walls. In 1908, the largest freestanding steel cell block in the world opened right here at the reformatory. But the problems began very quickly. By 1993, the Ohio State Reformatory had issues with overcrowding and sanitation. There was also the issue that a lot of the men being held here had what the public viewed as no rehabilitative values. This means that they were career criminals who could not actually be reformed through the prison system. For the public, it was a waste of resources. In 1973, the Council for Human Dignity filed a lawsuit against the prison on behalf of 2,200 inmates who all claimed that their constitutional rights were being violated because the prison was in such shambles. Instead of dealing with the lawsuit, the government simply shut the prison down, and by 1990, it was completely abandoned. Would you dare to explore the ruins of the Ohio State Reformatory after over a century of housing Ohio's worst criminals? Let me know how brave you are in the comments, and remember to hit subscribe. Number 5. Japan's Horror Aquarium There's a disturbingly creepy aquarium abandoned in Japan. You can find the aquarium in Fukushima, near where the nuclear meltdown took place on March 11, 2011. The Fukushima disaster was all because of a 9.1 magnitude earthquake that triggered a tsunami, damaged the backup generators, and sparked fear of a total meltdown. The government had to evacuate 230,000 residents from their homes and blockade the area. Naturally, there are a whole lot of abandoned places in and around Fukushima. But the Inubusaki Marine Park Aquarium is the most heartbreaking. When the area was abandoned, so too were the animals at the aquarium. A dolphin named Honey died in a pool by herself because nobody was allowed to go in and rescue her. Not only was she abandoned, but so were 46 penguins and hundreds upon hundreds of fish and reptiles. The facility closed immediately after the Fukushima disaster, and employees were not allowed to go back and feed them or maintain the park. All of these poor animals, including Honey the Dolphin, starved to death alone and sad, all because of the incompetence of the Japanese government and their failed nuclear reactor. Number 4. Abandoned Missile Base There's an abandoned missile base from the Cold War hiding in New Jersey, and according to Business Insider, it's currently on sale for $1.8 million. The missile base is in Woolwich Township, and it was one out of 12 originally built with the idea of protecting Philadelphia from Soviet missiles. But in 1974, when this clearly wasn't a threat anymore, the Army abandoned most of their missile bases. The town of Woolwich purchased the base in 2009 and are now trying to sell it, looking to make a cool return on their investment. But really, who would want to buy this place? Sure, it's sitting on its own land, but the base itself is eerie, nobody's cared for the thing in over 40 years, and it looks ready to fall on somebody's head. Number 3. A Murderer's Hideout Anyone who's been paying attention in 2021 knows about Brian Laundry, the man who killed his fiancée Gabby Petito in September and then vanished. His remains were recently discovered in the woods in Mayakahatchee Creek Park, Florida, bringing the case to a close. At least, mostly to a close. Internet sleuths who were following the case discovered an abandoned cabin. They say it's possible that Brian had been hiding in this abandoned cabin while the cops tried to find him. We don't know for sure if this is where the murderer was hiding out, but it's still a horrifyingly creepy shack in the middle of the forest. It would be the perfect location for a runaway killer to hide. The creepy cabin is near Big Slough Preserve. It's dilapidated, falling apart, but probably a lot warmer than curling up in a ball on the forest floor. We may never know if Brian really did visit this place, but it's certainly unsettling to picture him curled in a ball in the corner of the cabin, rocking himself back and forth with the vivid memory of how he killed his wife, circling his head. Number 2. The Last Circus There's a creepy abandoned circus house in New York and pretty much nobody knows it's there. 
The home is in Roscoe, a perfectly ordinary house that somebody spent a lot of time turning into a circus heaven. The mansion, because that's really what this place is, more of a mansion than a house, was built in the early 1900s. Today it sits in a field of overgrown shrubs. There's antique furniture inside, the colorful wallpaper is peeling and faded, and even the ceiling was made to look like a circus tent. But perhaps the coolest part about the circus house is that each room was designed to feel a little different. There seemed to be no rhyme or reason to the design so long as everything was centered around the flamboyant circus theme. Sadly, the abandoned circus house was very recently purchased for an unspecified amount of money and renovated. The people who purchased the abandoned house tore down all the circus stuff and totally ruined the creepy vibe. Number 1. Murphy Ranch Nazi Camp Murphy Ranch, located in Rustic Canyon, was built in the 1930s, but nobody really knows who built it or why. One of the most popular theories is that the people living in Rustic Canyon were secret Nazi spies. The Murphy Ranch was their attempt at building a Nazi White House in preparation of Hitler's Third Reich arriving in America. Obviously, this is a crazy theory, but it's been the main one that people believe for decades. Even though the ruins of the abandoned ranch currently belong to the Los Angeles Department of Recreation and Parks, that hasn't stopped the Nazi rumors from flowing. The truth is that Murphy Ranch had actually been built by a couple of hippies who were looking to create a self-sustaining utopia. These hippies were Winona and Norman Stevens, but their ambitious plans fell through, the ranch could never be completely finished, and all that remains today is the twisted remains of broken infrastructure and the weird rumor of a Nazi stronghold. Which of these creepy places would you dare to explore by yourself? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching. Be sure to hit subscribe if you enjoyed the video and come back soon for another amazing video right here on American Eye.